Well, we're on this latest round of protests in the overall situation in Venezuela. I'm joined by Diego Aria in New York. He is Venezuela's former ambassador to the United Nations. Uh, what do you make of these latest developments? Well, you know, today many things are accumulating. Uh, what we saw, but there is something even more important. Today, the Secretary General of the Organization of American States called uh, President Maduro a dictator and a thief responsible for the theft of the country's uh, patrimony. At the same time, Maduro said that the Spanish government, together with the United States government, were conspiring to overthrow him. And on top of that, the Minister of Defense of Venezuela said that there were movements of invasion of our country. It's a total uh, folly uh, due to the pressure, the popular pressure. As you can see, 70 or 80 percent of the people wants to get rid of Maduro. No one wants to overthrow him. A in a way, the only people who can overthrow a regime in Venezuela that is a militarized regime is the army. And he controls fully the army. And also passed a decree yesterday putting an end to the abilities of the National Assembly to legislate or to, or to control the administration. In a way, he put an end to democracy formally in Venezuela with this decree of exception, he called it, of economic emergency. Uh, there is, let's just kind of run through what's going on. There's a shortage of goods, power shortages, uh, shortened work week for employees, uh, an inflation rate around 180%. Uh, as you mentioned, the president issuing a state of emergency, the National Assembly and the president very much at odds. As you look at, at the state of situation in this troubled country, give us your short-term and long-term view of what's likely to happen. Well, uh, there will be a path. But before I uh, try to define that path, I would like to make a comment on the China's uh, intervention in Venezuela. The government have been uh, getting loans from China, 50 or 60 billions. China is the most important lender to Venezuela. But by now, the day that the Chinese discover the extent of the graft of the corruption of a regime that has been uh, selected by the Transparency International as one of the two or three most corrupt regimes, they're going to have to think twice when re reconsidering which will be the way to renegotiate the loans. We are, we are trying to get a referendum to revoke the president. That is within our Constitution. What is the government's reaction? Today you saw it. To try to block people for actually doing peaceful uh, marches in the, in the capital city of Caracas. They will try to block any initiative that uh, our Constitution provides, for example, not only to revoke him or a, or, or a national constitutional assembly referendum, they are opposing all the democratic and institutional options. So we are a country not at the brink of an explosion. It is an exploding country as we speak. We have more people killed in Venezuela than in Afghanistan that is at war. Yesterday, a doctor in a public hospital said to the New York Times, there is no bread in Venezuela, but our daily bread in our hospital is to see a dead child because of lack of food, medicines, or even electricity in the incubators. It is amazing that the wealthiest country of Latin America, the country has the largest oil reserve, will be starving its people by medicines and food like is happening today. Diego, uh, we're out of time. Thanks so much for joining us from New York. If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.